Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, uh, back here with another SolidWorks tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at um, ways of modelling a Eames rocker fibreglass seat shell. Then I'll um, split the tutorial into two parts. Uh, first part we'll be covering the inside, modelling the inside surface. And the second part of the tutorial will be uh, modelling the rolled edge around the outside, just to uh, make it a bit make each tutorial a bit shorter. Um, so I'm not going to bother covering modeling the structure on the underside because that's, a, that's a, a different topic. Okay, so what I've got on screen at the moment is a model that I built in Rhino last year in 2019 um, as a uh, CAD sculpting exercise to um, improve my modeling skills in Rhino. So I thought I'd bring that into SolidWorks as a reference instead of just uh, setting up elevations and line work. The model that I made in Rhino was uh, set up using elevations and line work so it may or may not be accurate to the, the actual object. Um, I didn't have one on hand or a scan to measure. So anyway, there's enough there for us to go on. So what I've done is the orange surface is an untrimmed version of the original main seat shell surface in here which is a single span surface so I have copied that I made a, uh, a surface offset and then I've untrimmed it to get back uh, get it back to original four-sided surface okay so to start with I'm going to go on the right hand plane and create a style spline I'm going to leave the Bezier option on Bezier, not B spline, because I just want the curve degree to update depending on how many points it's got. I'm going to create a degree 5 curve with 6 points. Degree is always points minus 1, so on a single span curve, 1, 2. Okay, so now if I select that curve, curve degree 5, 6 points, single span. Okay, and start by moving the points around. And I'll, one other thing to note, I've got my sketch settings with uh, enable snapping turned off at the moment just because I don't want it to, um, to snap to the reference geometry. I think I'll probably have to add another point in here to get get the curve a bit closer right, I'm going to add one more point so I select the spline because I've got no constraints on it it means I can just change the curve degree if I change the curve degree to 6 that means I'll have 7 7 points, control points, what do SolarWorks call them? Control V, Control Vertex, CV, okay. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the curvature so we can see what's going on. Now we'll turn into wireframe. Just gonna pull this curve here a little bit, get a bit more curve in the front there. Okay, I think that'll do us. As I said, this is just an approximation, so turn the curvature off. We'll accept that. You can dimension the spline if you want. Um with the style spline, it's pretty straightforward to dimension all the control vertices off planes or off the origin. Um, I'm not going to bother at the moment for this. Okay, so that's our center line sketch. Now I'm going to model the bottom. So to do that I'm going to create a plane that is normal to our center line. So pick the center line, pick the end point. Okay. So that is normal into the curve. Let's resize it a bit. 
Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because I want it leaning back. Plan B. Right plane. Create a line off the end of our... Um, might turn my... Um, snap tools back on there. Okay. And then we'll create a plane through the through the line I just created. That is perpendicular to the right plane. Okay, now you can see that's going to line up better with the uh, shell there. So create a sketch on the um, the plane just created. We're going to create another style spline, leave the Bezier setting, the, the spline type setting on Bezier, but we'll just adjust the degree to suit the amount of control vertices we create. So I might create one, two, three, four to start with, and we'll make that curve, the spline coincident with the end of our center line, and I'm going to put a vertical horizontal constraint horizontal constraint for our profile where it goes up to the center line and then basically just massage these points into place um, I don't want this control vertice going past here, so I might have to add another and add one more point. So because I've added constraints on the end, you can't change the curve degree there. So you have to right click on the line, insert control vertice, vertex, and then pick a point to add it. So that's lost our constraint. So add that back on. Okay, so these are almost collinear, so I might just make those collinear so we don't get an inflection there with the curve going back the other way. Okay, that's good enough for the front profile. Now I'm going to uh, do the top profile, and hopefully I'll just be able to make the um, plane normal to the center line. That's close enough. And again, add a sketch. This curve looks much simpler, so we will go style spline, leave it on Bezier, one, two, three points. So a degree two curve. Coincident with the end of our center line. This won't snap to that point because it's not in plane. Not, it doesn't lie on the plane. So we'll just use the, uh, oh, well, biometer. There we go. And just pull the middle CV across until we sort of approximate that curve. Okay. So now we've got the center profile, the bottom profile, the top profile. We'll save that. So now I'm going to add the, um, The other boundary. I'll probably do this as a. You could do it as a 3D curve, 3D sketch, but I might just do it as a um. As a uh, curve projected on a curve, just to save on um dimensioning. Okay, so right hand. I'm gonna add a style spline again. Just a note: I never use the old spline anymore. Um because it's unpredictable with the uh, with the tangent lengths. It's quite hard to dimension and control. Style spline's much easier because you can just dimension um, between CVs. Okay, so style spline, busier. Four points, which means a degree, one, two, three, span, three, degree, three curve. So,
Yeah, end point here. Consonant. Consonant. And then we'll just drag the handles around. Might have to might have to add another point. Otherwise the curve's gonna get very turn on curvature. That's not too bad. I'm gonna add one more CV. And you'll notice when you add the CV, the curve degree automatically changes. Okay, uh, that will do us for that view. We're just going to right click on there and turn off the curvature comb. So I want to insect this curve with a curve going the other, like from from another projection. So I could do it from, probably makes sense to go on from an angle looking down here. So I'm going to create a plane between the endpoints of the curve I just created and make that perpendicular the right plane. I'm going to go on sketch on that plane. Again, styles plane. One, two, three, four points. And tweak those points to approximate the edge of our reference surface. May or may not work. Right. So I need another point there. Because it's unconstrained, you can just increase the degree. Okay. So now I have to project those two curves onto each other. So you're going to insert curve projected and sketch on sketch. And then in your tree, you pick your two sketches, sketch and sketch, which gives us our 3D curve. Um, I always like converting entities with a curve into a into a 3D sketch because curves sometimes can be a bit fussy when you're trying to um, add constraints with other sketches and what have you to them. So just go insert 3D sketch, select the curve, convert entities, go OK. Now the curve, hide the curve. So there we go. So now I've got the exterior boundaries. Just going to drink my coffee. Okay, we've got the exterior boundaries. So this technique is called overbuilding. I'm making one big surface that is bigger than what we need. So if I big up, bring up the reference there, as you can see, the surface has been trimmed back to a boundary that's on the interior. Um, why do that? Okay, what's a good reason? Um, if we have a single surface like this, there's less chance of getting any wrinkles or discontinuities across the surface. Um, it means more manipulation of and maybe putting cross curves in to control the form, but it also means uh, less patches. I'm trying to put patches in here to create to create this inside surface here could be a bit of a nightmare because you want to try and make all the patches four sided boundaries. So. In this case, easier to make a bigger surface and then just trim back to where we want the trim to go. Okay, so I'm going to create the surface. Let's try a boundary surface first. I'm going to hide my reference. So, um, tell you what, let's insert surface extrude. 20 millimeters. You can just make your center line profile normal to um, normal to profile, but I'll, I'll just make it tangent to the surface. Okay, insert surface boundary. Boundary surface. Direction one, we're going to pick our center line extrusion and then the end profile. Direction two, pop profile, on profile. And then 
the only constraint we want to add is to edge one here, which is tangent to face. Okay, and because we're in boundary surface, and we have constraint here, we've got this option for tangent influence. So I need to turn on my curvature combs. Have a look, that's pretty pretty ugly. You can see there our center, our profile's running across. There's a massive discontinuity in there and a direction change in the surface. So this is where tangent influence can come in handy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if I slow this up to 100, that should fill out the surface there. Okay, it's filled that out. Oh, hello, look what it's done here. Made our profile and put this big wiggle in it at the front. So if I turn that down to zero again, that's cleaner there, but ugly the other way, the other direction. If I slide that up to 100, all right. Um, that's a problem with boundary surface. Sometimes this happens. Um, so I'm going to go for plan B. We'll try a loft. So insert surface loft. For profiles, I'm going to go from the extrude to the outer profile. Guide curves. Top to bottom. Okay. And edge one, we're going to change to tangent face. We don't want to make it curvature continuous um, because our top profile isn't curvature continuous and because we're mirroring this across it will become curvature continuous if it's tangent to the center line there. Tangent across the center line when we mirror it will be curvature continuous. Okay so looking at the curvature graph that's much cleaner we don't have that big dis discontinuity there and at the front there's no wobble so that's interesting. So always try a loft. If you can't get boundary surface to give you a clean surface, try a loft. A loft can be a bit fussier with the inputs, but that looks better. Okay, so I'm just gonna save that and I'm gonna bring up my um, reference surface. We're not exactly on that surface um, because the Rhino model, I manipulated all the points by hand to get the shape I wanted, so it's unsurprising that we're, um, we're off there. I can um, put another control curve across in the loft to make the shape fuller through, through the bum area. But I'm just going to check, before I do anything like that, I'm just going to check, um, put a zebra, zebra analysis on and check my surface. Okay, so I'll turn off the Rhino surface. Okay, so I'm gonna view, display, zebra stripes. Okay, here's a word of advice for anybody using zebra stripes. Whoops, okay, back into zebra stripes. Turn the quality up, which does nothing. Next thing. Well, the quality just makes the mesh finer. Next thing, make yourself a file which has stripes in it. So, because see how these are blurry on the edges? I, I can't figure out if it's using a bitmap and it's a low res file, but it's, it, it gets a bit indistinct when, you, when you're looking across um, continuities, across boundaries of surfaces, like over here. Um, so, I'm going to pick from file, and then I've got this file here, which I made in Photoshop, which is just a series of stripes. And because that's a higher res image, Sure, it's a little bit blurry there, but generally you can actually see there's no blur here. There's a bit here, but it's much, much clearer than using the built-in uh, zebra. Um, so that looks pretty good. Quite happy with that. So now I'll turn the zebra off and I will turn on um, curvature. Curvature in SolidWorks uh, is a bit weird because I don't know what type of curvature it is that it's showing you um, in what directions these, like the radius of curvature there, it says 85, but which direction is that? U or V or some other direction? Anyway, I'm quite happy with that surface there.
as a starting point. Now I'm wondering if we throw in another section to get it closer to the uh, the form of the Rhino model. So to do that, I'm going to roll back before the um, before the loft. I'm going to unhide my curves that have been hidden by SolidWorks automatically. And also this profile here. I want to run a profile across here. So I can try and run one off the middle. If you ever try and add a plane and you have a surface edge, it automatically highlights the midpoint and normal to that. But that's way too flat. I want it to run sort of evenly between the two curves. So in that case, to control the plane on the right hand plane I'm going to put a sketch and we are going to manually pick somewhere to put um, it looks about okay again I'd normally dimension all of this but for the sake of the tutorial and speeding things up I'm not going to bother Okay, so create a plane, pick the line, second reference, you're going to pick the right hand plane, perpendicular. Okay, so now we're going to add a sketch after I check. So my front profile was one, was a degree, how many? One, two, three, four. Degree four spline, so it's got five CVs. So I'll probably add the same thing. So we'll add sketch. And we'll go style spline, one, two, three, four, five CVs. Make this CV going to pierce the edge of that um, extrusion and make this first line horizontal, which is vertical, just the way this, like of a, the way that SolidWorks is, is oriented this plane. Anyway, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Uh, and a pierce relationship with my 3D sketch and I will turn on the curvature and I'm just going to walk this sort of round a bit and then I will turn on my orange surface and I'll select it and tools sketch tools intersection curve that is going to be deleted. That is just a visual reference for me to um, to use to um, match my spline up to. So again, I'm not going for a hundred percent match here. I'm just just. Uh, Blocking out the spline so it's fairly close. Okay, turn off the curvature. Display. Tangent to the center line because we have got a horizontal or a vertical constraint there. Okay, so now I've got that line. Oh, I'll go back in there. There's one thing I need to do. I'm going to delete that intersection curve. Because at some point in your model, if you, if you even model over reference geometry, you want to create no references to this by the time you've finished your model because you probably want to delete the um, the imported geometry. Okay, so there's my loft. You can see my loft is a long way off in the bum area. So I'm going to add that profile. Hopefully all the curve. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Curvature's gone wobbly in my loft. And you can see there, there's an internal discontinuity in the loft. Where the curvature graph breaks, and that's only a tangent connection. Anyway, let's see what it looks like. Okay, turn on zebras. Okay, that's really killed it, isn't it? Look at it. It's taken my nice form and correct it. 
and the other way. Such is life, modeling in SolidWorks. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, this is where we start going in circles. To lay the loft, I'm going to try it as a boundary surface again. Sometimes with more information, because I put that cross curve in there, boundary surface might behave itself with putting the wiggles in, and I might need to use the uh, tangent length, tangent influence right direction two, and the edge of the extrusion. Okay, edge of the extrusion, tangent face, tangent influence, we'll leave that on zero. Look at that, that's ugly as well. Mm. So now if I turn up my tangent influence, what's going to happen? Yeah, look, it's behaving itself now. I don't have that wriggle at the front. Just because I put that cross curve in. I'm going to accept that. Turn off my line work. Z for zebra. Okay. That's not too bad. All right, so learnings there. Loft is great if there's only uh, two boundaries in each direction. If you go and put a cross curve in, sometimes it doesn't work. Whereas the boundary surface seems to want to behave the other way. It needs more information to be, um, to be able to control it. So I'll turn my mirror on now and just drop a section through there. Okay, still a mile off there. Hmm, what's happened there? That's because my section's up here. Probably need to add another cross curve. Anyway, I think I won't bother adding another cross curve there um, for the purposes of this tutorial. There's enough information there. Okay, so let's say that that's our base surface. Next step would be to trim the exterior edge out, um, ready to um, ready to make this rolled edge. I will do that in the next tutorial, in another stage, um, just to make this simpler. Okay, thanks very much, AJ Design Studio. I hope you watch the second step of this um, of this tutorial, modelling an Eames rocker. Cheers.